Hey guys, Michael with the Night Mushroom Company here. So I decided to make this kind of YouTube channel for all of my um, students out there, for my mushroom growing classes, and also for the other commercial growers that are out um, around the world, really, that uh, I'd like to kind of share information with. And this kind of goes out to that group, um, the commercial mushroom growers. Um, also kind of like, you know, the big hobbyist kind of growers, I guess you could say. But uh, So basically, this video is going to be about my drum sterilizer. And this is, it's an atmospheric sterilizer that um, uses steam to generate about uh, 212 um, degrees Fahrenheit of, um, of temperature inside there. And I run it for about 16 hours and I uh, can sterilize about 30 bags. So as promised, I was going to kind of go over all of the details and everything that I kind of put into this. So <clears throat> let's just kind of uh, just start with the main drum. So the drum is actually made out of um, it's steel. It's not stainless steel at all. It's one of those uh, food grade drums. I actually bought it for $20 on it's like Facebook Marketplace. And it had a band around here to lock it in place. I did not want to use that because that will create um, pressure inside there. And I don't have any like holes or anything kind of cut into this just yet to do that. I wanted to kind of keep um, my options open for that because I may run about 2 PSI in the future, but uh, we'll see kind of what happens. So if we look in here, so I basically just have the float valve, it's just the one that uh, Eric Myers kind of recommended. Ordered it off of eBay, um, using the link on his site. Um, and then I've got the, uh, this is a, I think a 5500 watt element, if you're running on 240 volt. So you can run 240 volt elements, uh, like water heater elements, on 120 volts. Uh, it just takes a lot longer for things to heat up. The math kind of works out to be uh, about 25% that you'll actually get in the number of watts. Um, so for mine, it's a 5500 watt element on 220 volt, where whenever I'm running it on 120 volt, it's going to be about 25% uh, of the total of what it could have done. The overall thing was actually pretty easy to build. The only problem was working with the leaks, <laughs> so I had to get all the right parts, um, had to kind of do some repairs on the faucet outside, but everything kind of came together nicely because I've run this about three times and have had no issues with leaking or anything like that. So <clears throat> let's just kind of look at the element here. So like I said, it's just a water heater element. It's sticking out. I put some tape on there. Um, not the best thing in the world. I honestly just did that for um, in case my kids maybe you know come into contact animals or whatever um, I'm gonna be replacing that um, with something Eric Myers said that the hot pots are really kind of fragile so they kind of break off really easily but um, always make sure that you <laughs> that you ground these because you do not want to electrocute yourself by accident so like I said this um, this cable is really important um, it's actually a 12 gauge cable that I just pulled off of um, They run these so I work in IT so that they they actually run these uh, These power cables or 12 gauge cables for servers so because they draw a lot more power and That's important. You don't want to do like a 14 or a 16 gauge cable because these will actually heat up So if you plug it into the wall, this is going to heat up which is not good because it can actually melt So this right here actually let's just talk about this right quick so Eric Myers has a link on his page to a specific uh, pressure regulator, which is extremely important with this float valve. Um, if you don't regulate the pressure, you will have leaks, and it will leak through the valve, and you'll end up with the, the entire barrel filled up completely, which is not good. <laughs> Believe me. So what I did... I didn't want to order a $40 or $50 pressure regulator, so I went down to Home Depot. Mind you, pretty much everything that I have on here is either sourced locally, um, aside from the float valve, or it's just something that I already had. So I wanted to do this completely on the cheap because everything that I am making from this company, I want to invest back into it um, and have the most bang for my buck whenever I do it. So. This piece right here, so this valve, or this uh, this braided hose, I put on there because 
this will heat up dramatically just because you've got your water and your element and everything right here and this gets super hot so you have to consider that whenever you're just if you attach the hose directly onto this it will start to melt and you will have problems because the pressure um, just that the water sitting there will, will cause problems so this is the back of the actual element um, it's just like a one inch hole or like one and a quarter um, this piece right here this one right here is on the hose and this piece right here this actually all came in this set so the set was like 15 bucks and I don't know if you can actually find it based upon that so uh, yeah the uh, universal dishwasher supply line and it's fine it's been perfectly fine on the heat and everything um, so I had no issues and it literally came with the braided hose these two pieces um, that Oh yeah, sorry. So this is one piece right here. So it actually connects to um, this one and a quarter line, and then it brings it down to half inch uh, right here. I'm sorry, three eight. Yeah, three eighths inch. I had to look at the size here. So three inch, three eighth inch is the hose, and it's it's very small. But honestly, if you think about it, you don't need a lot of water going through this because it's only going to be trickling in. I mean, whenever that flow valve goes down. It's just barely going to fill it back up as water evaporates from uh, the steam. So next after that, so we've got this entire piece um, into here. This like elbow piece right here. Um, so this is 3 8 inch and then it goes to uh, just like a water hose, which was perfect. Because um, that's exactly what I was going to feed into it. Um, all this came in one set. Um, I'll have to find the link. It's, a, it's from Home Depot, so it makes it a lot easier. So, and then it goes into this um, brass piece right here, because this right here, this plastic piece, this is the pressure regulator that I'm using, and it's for uh, irrigation systems, but it uses pipe um, threading. So I had to adapt that pipe threading to the water hose, which was fairly easy because they make these, um, these adapters right here. Um, I think this is almost like eight dollars, just simply because it's brass and it's at Home Depot. So it's everything. Like I said, everything that I get here, I just sourced locally, or if I already had it, then I just kind of used it. Um, you must absolutely use Teflon tape on all this stuff because of the pressure. It's going to seep through, and you will get kind of drips coming out of it. So next is the pressure regulator. This one was about I think eighteen dollars. Really not that bad considering um, that the adjustable pressure regulators are like 40 or $50. This one uh, brings it down from uh, 50 PSI to 25 PSI, which is absolutely perfect. And then, so like I said, this one is uh, pipe threading, so I had to readapt it to um, my hose right here. So this is literally just taking the pipe threading and then adapting it to three quarter inch hose. So. And then, yeah, I feed it into my um, water hose that I've got hooked up outside because I run this whole thing outside on my back porch. It makes it so much easier. Don't have to worry about the steam or the heat or anything like that because it's out on the back porch. Um, yeah, and then uh, so once I've got the, the pipe or the, uh, the hose and everything hooked up like that, so the float valve is going to come up and it'll keep uh, the water about two inches above the heating element, which is perfect. And actually, you can kind of see the water line right there. Um, the next thing to think about here is that since this is not a, uh, a um, stainless steel barrel, I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> so since this is not a stainless steel barrel, the problem that you're always going to deal with is rust, uh, just because you know steel rusts if it's not stainless. And the only issue that I've had, honestly, is just that little spot right there, which I know it'll grow. Um, I may have to kind of knock it off with like some sandpaper, maybe put some like a uh, high temp paint over it just to kind of keep that down. Um, there's always going to be issues issues with rust on here, but honestly, for the cost of this barrel being twenty dollars compared to like seven hundred dollars for stainless, I would say it's definitely worth it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, really not a whole lot of money invested into this thing, and I get so much more, I get my time back, really. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, so like I was pressure cooking four bags at a time. 
I would have to literally invest three hours of my time just watching it, making sure that it didn't run dry, all that kind of crap that I'd have to usually deal with. Whereas with this thing, I could put 25, maybe 30 bags in it, and then just set it and forget it for about 19 hours or 16 hours, really. So I probably, so let me think about this, uh, $20 for the barrel, another 20 bucks for the float valve, uh, $10 for the heating element, various parts. Um, I think this kit right here was about $20, $20 that, um, so probably about 120 bucks in parts, which makes it well worth it. I mean, that's like a more, a little bit more than like, say, you know, like, oh, well, almost twice as much as like getting a Presto you know, cooker. So this is kind of what I have down in the bottom of the barrel, and you can see that the... <laughs> Sorry, my daughter's out here with me. So you can see that I've cut kind of a hole in here for the element, and then also a bigger hole over here, because the float valve sits about right here, so it's got plenty of room to move around. And then I, what I literally did to make a shelf in there is I, I scavenged these from an old grill that was rusting out, cut the edges off, um, the corners off, and it is perfect. So it sits down inside that barrel and gives me a plenty of... Uh, of room for all of the bags. So, say hi, Max. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I was gonna, I'm gonna be doing a whole lot more videos like this, just kind of, maybe even some impromptu ones. These are just kind of thought out. Um, so, I may be doing some live videos here and there of just things that kind of pop into my mind. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it's kind of weird to have to say that because I always see that people say that in the YouTube videos, but I guess it does kind of spread the word because it uh, gets us a lot more views and kind of helps us keep motivated to even you know keep making these videos. So, um, Michael with Midnight Mushroom. Have a great day.